Hi guys, here we are. The last chapter of this absolutely amazing book. Um, so we're on chapter 28. Let's see how it ends, shall we? Dear Mum, for ages I wanted to say goodbye to you. I even wrote a list called the goodbye list, although I think you already know that. I tried every way I could think of to say goodbye to you, but nothing felt right. It was as if saying goodbye was the biggest deal in the entire world and nothing would be good enough. Even if I hired a plane and it trailed a goodbye banner behind it for the whole world to see, it still wouldn't be enough. I had nine ways to say it. All nine were wrong. I had a tenth one and the tenth one was nothing because I couldn't decide on a tenth way to say goodbye. I'm attaching the goodbye list to this letter. Never written you a letter before. Abitha Nana used to say that no one writes letters anymore. So here I am, writing a letter, which means Abitha Nana is not technically correct. Then again, she's not technically correct on a lot of things. Like when she says you'll be laughing on the other side of your face, or you've got eyes in the back of your head. So many times over the years I've wanted to tell you things, Mum. Like when I rode my bike for the first time. I, I wobbled for ages, but I did it. When Dad let go of me, it felt like I could do anything. And I wanted to tell you when I got a gold star for a story about a dog with no tail. I was seven then and I cried for ages when I couldn't read it to you. I cried a lot. And in school, when everyone made Mother's Day cards, I pretended I needed the toilet so that I wouldn't have to make one and that made me cry even more. My friend Knuckles said recently that tears are water and you need water to make things grow. So I figured that all my tears were a good thing. I bet I make a few more. I'm okay with that. Billy's happy too. I just thought that I'd throw that in here. He looks just look, he looks just like you. I look like Dad, without the bald head, the big belly and the tattoo. <laughs> By the way, Dad got the tattoo for you. Koi carts mean you've overcome a struggle and when you die, Dad had a lot to overcome. But he's done okay and we love him even if we annoy him sometimes. Dad says it's us children that made him tear his hair out in the first place. He says he used to have more hair than an Angora rabbit, which I think is very unlikely because I looked it up on the internet and Dad never had that much hair, even in his dreams. Anyway, I think he's joking. I like it when he jokes. I think Dad's happy now too. There was a little while when he wasn't. I didn't notice because I was sad too, but everything's okay now. Dad has a new friend. Her name's Cat. We thought she was Catwoman, but she isn't. I think you'd like her. She said you were very pretty when I showed her your photo. Kat also said it was an honour for her to be able to spend time with your children. I think she means Billy and me. No one's ever said that before. Your armchair's in the living room now. It was Kat's idea for it to be put there. I think your armchair's the best. I didn't know it at the time, but your armchair's carried me on a journey when I felt all at sea, when I was under the darkest cloud. Your armchair was a safe place to go to and it's helped me realise that you can come through a storm and survive. You'll be stronger for it too. Maybe you'll be different though, a, a bit more grown up, but growing up's okay, even if it feels scary at times. As for the paper cranes, well, I know you were sending me those. Neva said our loved ones try to get in contact whatever way they can. I guess you already know I found a whole load of paper cranes in your cardboard box in the living room. Maybe they just fell out when the box got disturbed, but maybe you made them fall out. That's what I'm going to believe. As I was making them, you were sending them, and it felt like I was wishing to make contact with you as you were wishing to make contact with me. Boom. If you believe, things happen. I asked Dad if he knew your box of belongings was full of paper cranes, and Dad said he didn't because he'd never looked in the box. He was so sad after you died that he couldn't bring himself to. Now I've told Dad everything about the cranes, he believes in magic too. Another thing I'm going to believe is that I saw you when I fell in the water. I know that the brain does funny things when the body gets cold. Maybe it even sees things that aren't there. But I don't care what my medical books say about it. I know I saw you and I, I know what you told me. I'll never forget, Mum. I'm going to have to finish my letter now. It's not really a long one. The main thing is everyone's happy here in Eden and I think that's what you'd really like to know most of all. I'm going to post this note in the morning. You don't have to reply. I don't expect you to, so don't worry. A long time ago, you sent out a message in a bottle and you knew you'd get a reply. You believed. You didn't know when it would come, but I think this is the reply that you were waiting for. 
By the way, I used to think the one important person in my life who I didn't get to talk to was you. But now I can talk to you every day. Because the last thing, Mum, number 10 on the goodbye list, was the right way to say goodbye. Number 10 said do nothing. And I've had to do loads of goodbyes and go through a big storm to realise that doing nothing, not saying goodbye at all, is actually the right thing for me. Because you're in my heart, Mum. Beckett. The final Snoop secret mission. Sorry, hang on. The final Snoop secret mission. This was Snoop's last secret mission and I'm writing up the notes now because Billy says if I don't write them down, I'll forget. But Billy's wrong. I'll never forget what happened an hour ago, even if I lived to about 40. This is what happened on that final mission. At 5.43 a.m., Billy woke me as usual. I wasn't surprised. But this time he said he'd had a lovely dream about Mum. A few days ago I mentioned to Dad that Billy had been waking up at the same time every day and when Dad replied he sounded like he was swallowing... Uh, sorry. A few days ago I mentioned to Dad that Billy had been waking up at the same time every day and when Dad replied he sounded like he was swallowing jelly even though he'd just been eating a biscuit. Dad said that 5.43 was the exact time that Mum had died. At first I was shocked and I thought I'd feel sad but I didn't. It was just another thing that convinced me that Mum was all around us. The final mission. This was my idea and I told Billy I wanted to go. For the record, Billy said, OK. I wrote Dad a note in case he woke up and found us gone. I explained we wouldn't be long. Carrying. I had three items in my hand. A bag with 1,000 paper cranes inside. A letter with a list attached and an empty plastic bottle. My thoughts were that the paper cranes should be set free. Weather. The sun was rising and washing away the traces of night. Temperature was okay, but a bit breezy. A small gust of wind tugged at the bag and made it whip around my knees. Billy and I wandered through the park, and just as I went to speak to him, I realised he was down and poking in the mud. Billy said, and I quote, Look, I found Brian! Billy held up a small snail and waved him about. I said this was great. He must have followed you again. Well, we can take him home and put him back in his lovely house. For the record, Billy held the snail up to his ear. No, said Billy, setting Brian back in the mud. Brian says he's not lost. He's travelled all over only to realise that he belongs at home with his family. This is his home in the mud and he's happy now. My mood. Surprised but over the moon. I even waved goodbye to Brian. I checked there was no one else around to see me first. As we walked down towards the water's edge, I told Billy I'd written Mum a letter. Billy asked if she'd get it because she was actually dead. I said she would. He asked if she'd reply because she was still actually dead. I said I thought she already had. I opened the bag and told Billy to help himself because we were going to let all the cranes go. Together we took fistfuls of cranes and threw them into the air. We watched them as they flew up into the sky. I said I thought things would be okay from now on. I was saying it to Mum, really. And then I said I was going to get on with my life. What happened next? The butterfly bracelet must have caught on something because it snapped and fell off my wrist into the sand. I picked it up and put it in my pocket. That's when I knew something amazing was going to happen. Billy fired paper cranes higher and higher, white birds in a blue sky. I reached into the bag too and tried to throw mine higher. A breeze carried some birds far from us and others went to the ocean and bobbed there. Some tickled my arms before falling on the sand. It felt like we were standing inside a shaken snow globe. That's when the strangest thing happened. I realised what it was. There was no other place in the world I was supposed to be. This was me. Eleven-year-old Beckett Rumsey, who used to be a big fan of reading medical books, but now likes books on origami. Older brother of no longer a bug collector, Billy. Son of the codfather fish delivery man. Grandson of Abitha Nana, who thinks of mum every day and is happy. Billy reached into the bag one final time and pulled out the last of the paper cranes and threw them into the air. The bag was empty. I tipped it up, double-checking that we'd let all the cranes go. We watched as they floated away on the breeze. Billy raced across the sand, waving at them and shouting, Goodbye, lovely birds! at the top of his lungs. I followed him, my toes ploughing furrowed in the sand. Then I stopped, spread my arms out wide, closed my eyes and spun around. The wind whipped my hair and dizzy I opened my eyes again and looked at the letter to Mum. 
I quickly folded it into a crane and then placed it inside the plastic bottle. For you, Mum, I whispered. For Mummy, Billy echoed as he ran towards me. I told Billy that we had to hold on to the bottle together before we let it go. We both touched it. I think Mum would like that, I said. Together we launched the plastic bottle far across the waves and we watched as it bobbed about and then got further away, far out of our reach. Eventually we couldn't see it anymore and Billy asked if it had gone to the ocean. I think it has. It's definitely gone to Mum, I explained. She knew I'd get her message in reply. I faced the ocean. I never needed to say goodbye, no matter how much I wished I had. Our story won't ever end with a goodbye. How can it when you're all around us? When you're in the sun, in the rain, and when you're in my heart and you're in Billy's. You see, in the end, I got your message. And our message back is that we love you and we'll never forget you. In the distance, a church bell tolled and Billy and I headed back across the sand. Billy did a cartwheel and I thought of Mum and was happier than ever before. The sun came up fully and the sky was completely cloudless and it was a new chapter for us all. Time. 6.45am. Billy reached for my hand and gave it a squeeze. I knew it was Billy's way of asking if everything would be okay from today onwards. I squeezed back, my hand tightly furled around Billy's, and I meant okay with all my heart this time. Billy looked up at me and asked, Is it really okay? Yes, I replied. It really is. And that's the end. Ah. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. This is one of my all-time favourite books. I really love this. There's a lot of um, deep and tricky things to manoeuvre through in there, but it's a really lovely ending um, and looks at relationships in quite a lot of detail, I think. Um, and there's something we can all take away from that about nurturing our friendships, I think, making sure that we don't turn our back on them so that they can continue to grow. Now to think about what to read next. Right, remember um, to go and take the quiz. Okay, if you've missed any of the videos and they're all on YouTube, you can go back and find them and listen to them. Um, thank you for coming on this journey with me. I've genuinely, this has been the best part of lockdown for me, reading this to you guys. I've really enjoyed it. Um, and we'll see you soon. Thanks guys, see you later. Bye.